Hi there. Listen. It's quiet. We've had people in the yards working in our neighborhood. My husband's working in the garage, which is right below my studio window. So it's been a little loud, but I've waited and waited and it is what it is. So forgive me if you hear a lot of noise, I will try and speak up. Today, if you've not been in my studio, welcome to my studio. Um, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name's Kim Ballantyne and I'm an artist and I am here ready to paint. Can you see? I got my art clothes on. I didn't even do my hair for you guys today. I'm just showing up. Anyway, uh, we are going to work on a painting that's on heavy duty paper. And we're gonna use acrylic paint, not watercolor or gouache. And we're gonna finish it off with an oil stick, which I love to do. And it's a leopard is the subject matter. Uh, you're gonna hear me call it a tiger on multiple occasions. And if I could edit that out, I would, but you know what? It is what it is. I have no idea where my brain goes sometimes when I'm just yapping along, painting. Ah, a tiger came out several times. Anyway, I know it's a leopard. It's a leopard with spots. So uh, we are going to use a very minimal palette, which is very unusual for me, but the whole painting, I took it, um, it's a photograph, and it, it basically is three colors at best, adding the lights and the darks um, to make the value change, and here we go. You certainly are at liberty to do whatever color you want. I just wanted to do her as she was on the rock or the tree. Um, and we are going, I am doing the um, painting real time initially. I do fast forward it in places where it's very mundane, but you do see me mixing paint. For those of you out there who are rule followers, I'm a rule breaker. Yes, I've had training. Um, yes, I've been painting for, I don't know, a long time, probably, probably more than 30 years. And I taught art for 20. So yes, I know the rules, but I like to have fun and I like to create whatever way I'm gonna go with it. So um, we're gonna have a good time. I have, put in the description below the different um, resources that I use. And I don't know if I don't answer a question or you're like, whoa, she left me hanging. Just, I, I answer all comments, questions, whatever, I love it. So um, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Every Wednesday, a video pops up and who knows what I'm gonna be doing. Um, I am going to be heading to the coast soon, so you're going to have a different uh, venue in the back, um, which will be a whole nother bag of worms, but it'll be fun. So without any further ado, let's paint our cat. So what you need to do is get a piece of paper. If you've got acrylic um, paints, pull those out. If you got something else, use that. If you have a cool picture of a leopard or any animal you want to paint, um, definitely bring that along. Oh, and one thing I challenge all of us to do is while it's a minimal palette, I do throw in weird colors occasionally. And people are like, what? Well, I encourage you, if you've got a pet around the house right now, pick that pet up. If it is a pet with white fur, it's not just white fur, it's got grays in it and probably the skin's coming up through there. There's probably a little pink, a little bit of beige. Um, next time you go outside and you're looking at a blade of grass or a leaf and you think, mm, my brain's telling me it's green. Oh, no, no, no. The sun's hitting it or it's at night. There's a whole lot of different colors that are incorporated. Allow yourselves to bring those colors in. 
All right, so here's the reference photo. She's a gorgeous. Kilimanjaro is my paper. It's 300 pounds. I love it. I get it from Cheap Joe's. And here is the up close. Maybe you can see a little bit of the texture. Okay, <clears throat> so you see that I lightly sketched. Well, I didn't lightly sketch it, but I sketched out the cat. And now I am going to <clears throat> basically do the background. Here is, not the background, but the, the background of the tiger, the spots. Because you can see that the glare here is terrible. Um, you know, there's just a lot of this color. So I love Charvin paint so that's what I'm using um, it's nice and thick so I'm gonna get the base on um, I'm gonna use some of this and I'm gonna use I'm gonna have a little bit of brown just because there's gonna be some dark, darker patches. So I have this brown. This is another brand that I love, Amsterdam Expert Acrylic. I just love the quality. It's um, just really, it's not as thick as this, but it's just really like butter. It's just beautiful. And then <clears throat> I always like to add in something a little bit different to sort of shake it up a little bit. And so this is another um, Amsterdam one. Um, it's number 292. Um, the glare, y'all, in the window is just amazing. I can hardly see anything. Um, I believe this is buff, but I'll put it in the link below. And then because around the tiger's nose, there's going to be a little bit of dark. So I'm going to put a little bit of black. And this is, again, the Charvin. And then I always get my white, <clears throat> either Amsterdam or Lucas, because I use so much white. But I always have white on my palette because I never know when I need to lighten it a little bit. And the brush that I love the most are my rosemary brushes. <clears throat> and I, you know, a lot of people like, um, they'll use round tip brushes, uh, you know, bigger, whatever. But I am a flat girl. I, I, I just, I don't know. I just love it. So I'm going to... I like to blend as I go because, um, you know, even in our skin, forget the fur, but even in our skin, you know, it's, it's just not, it's not smooth and perfect. So I don't like to um, mix up a bunch and make it all perfect. I will mix up um, a little bit different ones and just have them as I go along. Uh, and just keep adding to them. All right. <clears throat> so, usually I would tell you to start with the, uh, the, the eyes of an animal. But here, I am not going to do that. I'm going to do that um, after I get this base color laid down. So, I am going to start... Back here, where his haunches are up on the rock. And it's a little bit darker. <clears throat> um, right here, before it... It bends and the knee sort of comes down. 
So for the knee part, I'm trying to see how I can do this so y'all can see how I'm mixing it as I go. Um, I want the knee part to be a little bit lighter because, um, you know, when something's in the forefront or a little bit further up, it's going to be a little bit lighter because the sun will be hitting that. So, and I want it to just be a little subtle. But you want to make sure you keep it with that. And this is not meant to be realistic, you guys. This is supposed to be a little whimsy, um, a little impressionistic. Um, again, it's all about having some fun. Okay. So there's that knee. <clears throat> and then when you go to this part of the body here, again, it's almost another color. Which is why I put all those different colors down here so I can get yet another color. It's more yellowy. So, I really want it to be a lot different than this color. So you can see the subtle change, right, in the three bits. I like to break it up when I'm applying the paint to quadrants, if you will. Okay, and then as we get to the back part right before the shoulder, that sort of um, gets even darker. So, get that dark. I move this out of the way. And we're going to get this little aspect of it in. Okay. Remember, he's got fur, so it's not going to be all smooth. Okay, and then as we come down to this part of his shoulder, he's got some white in here. So I'm going to take this, stick it out. I can get that sort of in there. Okay. That was a little intense, that little elbow thingy. All right. <clears throat> and then this right here is more um, more like this color, I think. So... So we're going to keep laying down the color on the face. We're going to get that dark nose in and we're actually going to um, put in some of the um, eyes. She is coming into focus a little bit. The hard part is making sure you do um, down by the nose, that the nose down below and up above are two different tones. All right, our cat's coming alive. Now I'm going to put, this is Soho and it's yellow okra. And I am going to add that to our palette because we're now going to work on the uh, log that the cat is laying on. And so, if you can see, again, I'm at, a win I'm at two windows and it is super bright out. So you can see right here, see the color? 
So it's like grays and beige and this yellow ochre and some brown. So I want to make sure it has that like texture. But when we come back with the uh, oil sticks, that's when we'll add some of that texture in. Right now, I just really want to get um, this medium color in. And then once I get that, then I'll bring in some of these other colors. So that's what I'm working on right now. So I'm putting the reference photo up for a second so you can kind of see. And then I'm just laying down that middle tone, like I said. And I'm putting it everywhere. I've, I did add some darks, you know, where the shadow from uh, her body is on the log. And, you know, I just go back and forth with lights and darks and grays and browns. And I just streak it in and just, you know, it's given that feeling that we're building some texture in that we're going to add with the sticks toward the end. But right now we just need to get lots of grays, dark browns, light browns. Okay, now we're going to do the um, spots. And I have no rhyme or reason. I look at her and then I just go crazy. Um, I put them everywhere and there's absolutely, and I do add in some of the darks, um, but I don't, the, they do not look anything like what the pictures did. I'm just given the illusion that she's covered in a lot of spots. And then I decided brown and blue are so beautiful together. I went ahead and just threw in, um, a blue background at the top. All right, so you can see that I took and cut a piece of this and put, usually I like to just take the stick and mark with it, but because of the spots on the tiger or the um, leopard are so small, it just was more frustrating than it was worth. So what I did is I cut a piece and then I um, put some of this, um, this wax, which is, I, I just love this. But there's lots of different types out there. Um, and this is way more than I will need. I really need to come up with something else to use this so I don't have waste. And then I have this fantastic small palette knife that I'm going to use and I find that when I'm working with this it's much easier <clears throat> to have a paper towel near so here we are and you might be wondering okay if it's all this frustrating why in the world is she doing spots with the wax and it's because it just gives it that extra dimension a little bit um, and it makes it look a little more, I know I said I wasn't going to make this like realistic, um, and it's not, but it does give it a little bit more authenticity of the fur feel. Um, so that is what I'm doing and I'm not doing every single one. I'm just doing some of them, some of the spots. Um, and you could have not done it with paint first. You could have just done it straight with this. I just, I don't, um, I don't know. I just don't always think, sometimes I have great plans, but then I don't do it. Um, so that is why I did it, um, first in paint. But I like it because it just gives it that, it's another dimension. Um, it just feels, it just feels fun. Um, I'm also going to, because I have so much of it, I'm also going to put it, I think, on the, on the log to kind of give this log 
a little bit of roughness. Um, so anyway, this is definitely um, a totally different beast than anything that we've worked with so far. But one of the things I love about it is it just, again, you know, my whole thing is all about playing and having fun and experimenting and, um, you know, really, really getting into something. Don't, you know, it's one thing to get stuck um, and perfect your craft. I think that's super important. But... I also think it's super important to have some fun and try some new stuff. And I have to push myself now since I'm not teaching like I used to teach. Um, <clears throat> okay, can you see where I've done this over here? I just realized that um, I wasn't getting everything. So <clears throat> here we are with the little bits in there. You can see it up close. Um, so I'm gonna have to let this dry. It's gonna take a few days, but I'm gonna call this one, I think, the eye of the tiger. I have to say, guys, I'm done. This has been one of my favorite videos. I had fun doing this. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe below. Um, hit a thumbs up and remember that if you want to catch up on social media, I am at Kim B. Originals. Just click message me. I will see you next week.